Really? Ugh. Really? Ugh. Really? That's the kind of mistake you just don't make. Ugh. Chess 24 had their fifth birthday on the 24th of February. To celebrate, Jan Gustafsson organized a banter blitz match between Peter Svidler and Magnus Carlsen. In this video, I intend to analyze some of the six games played between these two giants of chess. The match ended five and a half half in favor of Magnus Carlsen. There were many interesting points to discuss in the six games. Let's begin. On Magnus Carlsen's Chess 24 page, you can see all the games he played against Peter Svidler. Just scrolling up, you can see here were all the games. Magnus won the first one, and the second one, a draw in the third game, a win in the fourth game, trapping the rook, a win in the fifth game, very interesting, risky opening from Peter, and a win in the sixth game, a perk. Here we can see Magnus has only played uh, six games on chess 24, starting at 2800 and reaching 2888 against Peter. This was the most interesting game between the two of them. C4, G6, D4, I C3, and now C5. Peter playing a super risky opening because he's down three points. D5, take, take, and now F5. I've seen this before. And the idea is to act quickly in the center, and Magnus does just that with e4, sacrificing a pawn. And after f3, knight f6, f e4, queen a5, this move surprised me when I saw it, and it was very interesting to see how Magnus reacted. Bishop d2 here is pointless, because knight e4, and after knight f3, knight d2, queen d2, perhaps white has compensation anyway, but you've lost the bishop pair, so there's no point doing this. So what happened is... Magnus just sacked the pawn anyway, knight f3. Queen takes c3 check is just way too risky. Bishop d2, queen a3. Here you might go queen c2 or even e5 straight away. It's just too risky at the moment. So after knight e4, queen c2. Another very clever move here because queen c3 doesn't work because after take bishop e2. So queen c2, castle again, just sacking the pawn. Bishop d3, so last three moves, Magnus has just sacked the c3 pawn. Queen takes e3 check only move because after knight f6, he's just busted probably. Just castle or bishop h6. You might even crash through. Bishop h6 first and then castle. Can't survive this. Actually here, just bishop g6 instead of castle. So, after this, Peter is in huge trouble. Which makes sense, he plays a very risky opening. Queen takes. And after knight takes c3. If the knight escapes, then black will be up two pawns so Magnus traps it with a4 e6 is a bad move because after bishop d2 the knight is trapped interesting Magnus mentioned e5 in his analysis because after bishop d2 e4 uh, works out so after knight takes e5 rook e8 Magnus was saying king d2 and this is working out nicely for white because after rook takes e5 king c3 the king is just to expose the bishop might come to f4 Black is just too weak on the black squares. So after a4, e6 was a bad move. Bishop d2 just traps the knight. After take, you can lock down, but there's no compensation here. Bishop h6, rook f6, knight g5, final point to mention. In this position, Magnus could not believe he missed a very nice tactical move. Not knight g5, but knight takes d4. Because really? Okay, now I needed to... I mean, knight d4 just went immediately. Which is, I mean, that is completely unforgivable. That's the kind of mistake you just don't make. Ugh. Because after rook takes f1, rook takes f1, rook f8 will be checkmate. So you have to play a move like bishop d7, and then here, white is just uh, totally winning. Knight b5, piece up, and coming into the position. There's no point trying, really. Bishop e4, bishop d5, it's over. So Magnus got a bit angry after knight g5. Still winning though, after bishop f5, bishop e4, knight e5, take, and then after bishop takes b7, rook e8, bishop d5, check. And now knight e4, and the rook is surprisingly trapped. Bishop takes, rook takes f6, and that was the end of the game. So a really nice crush from Magnus, and it's really dubious opening. Game 1, quick review, d4, knight f6. Bishop g5, g6, which is a bit dubious. You allow the doubling pawns. Then, knight c3, f5, 
bishop g2 and e3 e3 g3 this really does stop f4 it's so difficult for black to get a pawn break knight d7 knight e2 b4 castle pretty good position for white rook b1 queen a5 queen a4 offering your queen trade knight comes into e4 and after take and then take we have this interesting imbalance bishop pair against knights but black's pawn structure is very static rook c8 knight c3 bishop f3 knight f4 knight d5 it looks like white is just coming in a5 rook a4 very very tricky here because magnus was mentioning this in his analysis rook takes b6 you can't because rook takes c4 so you have to keep the rook on a4 and it looks like this is a permanent weakness after rook c6 rook b1 king f8 you can't go rook c8 because knight e7 check will pick up the rook so here king f8 and now uh, you can't go rook takes b6 because peter he was just setting up a trick after rook takes b6 take take bishop takes d4 is a nice trap because you cannot take because rook e1 checkmate so magnus just goes king f1 and in this position white is just much better after rook c8 knight takes b6 uh, protecting the pawn and attacking the rook after rook c8 knight d7 and that is game for magnus game three quick review e4 c5 knight c6 and knight c3 Avoiding the Shevnikov, so Magnus goes e5 this time, bishop c4, g6, d3, h6, stopping knight g5. Typical rerouting. Knight e3, and then the knights can come to d5. Knight comes in, swap off, and then f5 already. Black's position looks more promising. There's more potential of a kingside attack. More potential for an interesting position. Take, take. Queen d7, b4, bishop e6, and I think here Peter makes a mistake by taking. He should go rook b1 first, because after take, take, knight e3, e4 is a very nasty surprise. After rook b1, take, Peter has to take back with a pawn, because after knight takes c4, then e takes d3, y is in trouble. So after d c4, Magnus is taking over rook d8, knight d5. Knight e5 attacking c4 and after queen e2 protecting it, you take it anyway. Queen takes, queen d5 and the difference, the important point here is you can't go rook takes b7 because the bishop is hanging. So, here you have to go, you have to move the bishop and then b6. Let's see the rest. Good technique here. So, Rook b5, the final blunder, because after bishop b4, Magnus does something pretty clever. Just traps the rook, because after rook b7, bishop has to move, and then a6. So that was a nice win from Magnus.